isekai anime. What the anime community would have you believe are a scorn on society for existing. But I've always had this vague itch to give them a shot. Because surely they can't be all that bad. Surely there are some good ones amidst all the copy-paste default character model MCs. In these magical societies where they are somehow overpowered. To answer this question, I turned to Crunchyroll and decided to watch the first episode of every single isekai anime they have to offer. Why would I put myself through this? Because sometimes you just do things on a whim and suffer the consequences later. Before we begin in earnest, I'm establishing a few ground rules that I might end up breaking by the end of this project. First, I'm only watching isekai anime that I haven't seen. I may end up rewatching some to cleanse my palate, but for the sake of the video, I won't be talking about them on their own. But for your viewing pleasure, I attach my thoughts to them just because. Now with that out of the way, allow me to begin diving down the isekai rabbit hole. The first isekai anime I decided to watch was in Another World with My Smartphone, an anime I'd heard about because of the goofy premise, which is just kind of there. The smartphone just exists and isn't the source of any of the magical things. Ochizuki, the MC, is just like, don't ask about it, it doesn't matter. He is just OP independent of having a smartphone. The smartphone is, is just a phone. He just has all of the magic powers at once. Because... You know, why not? What else would you have? As a show, smartphone doesn't do anything crazy, but I wrote down that it could be second monitor entertainment. Take that as you will. But I did like the little chibi scene cutaways. Those are cute. Next up, we have How a Realist Hero Rebuilt the Kingdom, a rare isekai where the protagonist is not magically overpowered. He's just smart. But he also is done with all the BS and is funny in that way because he is just being real. And you know, the kingdom kind of needed it. He feels normal, but it also is an isekai that seems like it's going to focus more on the economic factors of the series as opposed to being a magical journey to defeat the demon lord. Which he can't do. He's got taxes. He's got a kingdom to run. He's got a job to do. Which is great. You love to see it. Something different. The third series I watched was Tsukimichi Moonlit Fantasy, which was very boring, leaning on kind of bad. It also wins the award for the most noticeably bad audio mixing. There are a few scenes where the audio is genuinely messed up, which was probably the only thing keeping me paying attention to it, but like not in a good way, because the MC is boring design, he's OP, not really in a fun way, and uh, we also have slavery in this one, which is never a good sign, and they couldn't even give me truck coon to offset it, he's just transported, it's just not, not good. Next up, we had How Not to Summon a Demon Lord, the first genuinely bad isekai anime I watched, because it is horny in the boring way, and the MC is also probably an incel, which is never going to end well. He also has slaves, too, because the very fanservice girls try to enslave him only for him to pull out that Uno reverse card and enslave them instead. Which is dumb. Beyond just the slavery part. That doesn't need to be there in anything ever. But it also is just every 30 seconds of this show, it zooms in on the boobs of the girl, and you're like, oh my god, move on. I briefly humored the thought of taking a shot every purely boob shot and then I realized I would die of alcohol poisoning before I even finished the episode. I'm not going to watch any more of this. I'm good. Thank you very much. <laughs> 
After that, I watched The Eighth Son, Are You Kidding Me? Which was fine, leaning towards bad, but thankfully wasn't as annoyingly excessive with the whole meta isekai bit. And the MC has brown hair, which, good for him, he's finally doing something different, even if brown hair might as well be the next step down from the black hair isekai protagonist. The plot is just that the family is poor. But the MC is like, no, how could it be? I can't be poor. That's not okay. But then he's actually overpowered in the magic department, and it's like, yep, we still are an isekai anime. The production on this one was also kind of rough. But it felt more fantasy than isekai, which is good, because usually it is the other way around. <laughs> Now, before I talk about this next one, I want to mitigate everything bad I said about any previous series because I have no kind words for Sereg Gen Soki Spirit Chronicles, which was genuinely one of the worst first episodes of anime I've ever seen, independent of being an isekai. Because at first, the isekai event itself is super confusing. But it's like kind of in a funny way, so it gets that pass. But then it just goes off the rails and actively making every bad decision possible. So the protagonist saves the princess from some people who kidnapped her. But instead of hearing out the main character, the royal guards show up and just arrest him immediately without even bothering to hear his side of the story. And then we cut to the main character being brutally tortured for no reason. And the princess runs in to save him and all the MC gets is, sorry. That sucks, and then the world moves on. Like my brother in Christ, leave that kingdom now. They don't they don't need you. You are not worth whatever you're gonna have to go through. You should be the edgy protagonist at this point. They tortured you for no reason. But instead he's just like happily with the princess again. Like you deserve reparations or something, or at least proper compensation for being wrongly imprisoned, tortured, abused, basically the whole nine yards. It just baffles me how there is nothing redeemable there. Everything is just vile and was the only one that actively made me incredibly furious just watching. And then we had Wiseman's Grandchild, a series that does nothing new, but not in an offensively bad way. We got our OP protagonist, a very obvious magic system that spends too much time explaining itself, a basic character design, a magic academy, you get the bit. The only remotely funny part is the main character realizing every adult in his life is basically the laundry list of every important person in society. I finished the episode, but I have no strong emotions about it beyond that it was just one of the anime of all time. <laughs> Next we have Death March to the Parallel World Rhapsody, a show that I heard no positive things about, but also has a very edgy title that I thought would mean it would be very edgy. But the Death March was just that he was being overworked by his job, which like, based me too buddy. It did remind me of Japanese work culture where it's like, yeah, just sleep at your job and have several coworkers push all their work onto you. That's just how it is. And then he falls asleep and enters the fantasy world that is a mix of all the games he was working on. But I don't think we actually know if it was isekai For all we know, he could just be asleep. The assumption is that he probably died there, but we don't know that for sure. It does spend the first half of the episode building up to the isekai, which is good. It also makes me kind of like the isekai world he enters better because it's like a buggy video game full of a dumb mechanic he made where it's like, yeah, I'm OP because I programmed a mechanic to just be able to kill all of the enemies. It's just like he has this meteor attack that he basically just wipes an entire race with because it was a thing he made up in three seconds to get a guy off of him 
to do some work. And then he just has it in the game and goes, oops, I accidentally killed an entire race of lizard men. Which makes him OP, and I can believe that more than just being OP as a whole. It's not the best, but like, my brain can wrap around it, and it, there was effort expended there, even if it was like, I did a dumb thing making a game, but I guess it's here too. But it did also make me realize I kind of like the more explicit video game system isekais. And this one felt a lot more chill once he established he was OP. And it's like a other anime airing right now, or at least at the time I'm writing, a certain dude's VR in my life where it's just kind of chill and they're just kind of vibing. And believe it or not, I think I would watch a little more of this. Maybe a second one or entertainment, but... If I just, like, want to chill and put something on while I do something else, like, I feel like that would be an okay one to put on. Now we reached our first critically acclaimed isekai, Ascendance of a Bookworm, which, unsurprisingly, was a good isekai. The MC dies and a bunch of books fall on her, which is funny. But I think this isekai shines because, like, there isn't anything crazy. Main is just a kid who wants to read a book. She just wants to get that knowledge. And I imagine there will be magic stuff later, but it's not in the first episode. And it doesn't really fall into all of the typical isekai traps that every other one falls into. And it also has a female protagonist, which is great. You'll love to see it. But I think Bookworm works because there's this certain wonder to the world where it's like, wow... This is how the society is, as opposed to like, wow, I'm OP, here's how this magic system works. It falls into that category I kind of mentioned earlier, where it's like, this is a fantasy series with an isekai element, and not an isekai series with a fantasy element. And I think usually it's better when it is the isekai element and not an isekai series. <laughs> And continuing the female lead train, we have My Next Life as a Villainess, All Routes Lead to Doom. The first Atoma game isekai, but most certainly not the last. Katarina gets truckooned, and in the context of the fantasy world, she just hits her head and all of a sudden has the memories of this Japanese girl. She figures out it's the Atoma game she loves, but she's a villainess who's gonna die. So naturally, she's trying to uh, not die. But also, she's married off to a guy like 8 years old, and I'm like, hmm? Excuse me? That's uh, too young, even for a fantasy world. I did also think there was a possibility of an incest route in the game before I realized I'd mixed things up. So I'm glad that wasn't there, but uh, make it a little less confusing for my brain that has been smoothed over by all the other isekai. But all in all, it's a fun first episode that doesn't spend too long dwelling on the isekai bits and mainly focuses on Katarina, you know, not dying. <laughs> And after some good series, you return to Isekai Cheat Magician. Which I thought the two got Isekai'd by getting hit by like a normal biker, not like a motorcycle, like a pedal bike. But they actually got summoned just on a whim. I kind of would have preferred just it being a biker, because that's at least kind of funny, but whatever. The MC guy tries to be a hero, and then the girl he gets transported with is like what the hell, dude? Why did you try to sacrifice yourself for me? Not cool. But honestly, I kind of would have enjoyed the series a little more if he had died right there and she kind of had to deal with that because that would at least be something interesting. And instead, it's he's fine and she's fine and it feels like the girlfriend plays isekai type thing where it's like the guy kind of knows but the girl's like, oh, what do I do? 
it's like she's playing Minecraft for the first time with her with her boyfriend, except they're not dating because uh, they can't do that yet. That'll probably be in like season six at this point. But the rest of the episode is just all the tropes and stuff. You get the magic aptitude test, and who would have guessed that they're both superpowered? It was at this point I, I understood isekai anime for myself. They are anime hallmark movies. They're not the worst. They're not particularly good. They are just consumable entertainment that can keep you entertained, even if not very well. The second highest rated isekai of this batch was the Saga of Tanya the Evil, an isekai I knew was good. But if you go off the first episode, you can't really tell it's an isekai. But that's kind of good because it makes the thing go a lot harder when Tanya wipes her entire platoon on her own. And it was here I realized what makes a good isekai, which is that there are just no isekai tropes, it is just a standalone series that eventually I will learn has an isekai element to it. And as I said before, it is a series that puts the genre before the isekai tropes, and that's the good way to do it. It is primarily a war series, but there is an isekai element in it, which is fine. I can live with it more that way. Tanya's still OP, but the world is built enough where I'm okay with it. It's not constantly poking fun at itself, but instead is just telling the story it wants to. And also, there's an isekai element in it. Next up, we have I'm Standing on a Million Lives, the edgiest series so far, but it does get points for having this, like, bootleg Pepsi Man-looking guy in it. Our protagonist is a gamer, in the derogatory term, who feels like he's one bad day away from telling his non-existent friends to not come to school tomorrow but the actual concept of the show is kind of neat the three leads get transported to a world and have to complete a quest in order to return home the quests are all varying difficulties but if they all die at once the game ends and then they all die so their first task with our newest guy is to defeat this big demon that wipes the floor at them and is very much stronger than all of them so our incel MC guy goes full edgelord and tells the other surviving girl he's going to grind because she's useless. The only problem is his vibes are absolutely terrible and I do not like him, but I think the concept of the story is cool. I won't be watching any more of it, but if anyone wants to take that premise and use it on a better series, please do. I will read it or watch it. Uh? In other news, high school prodigies have it easy even in another world. Sure is an isekai. Yet seven high schoolers were basically running the country of Japan, but also breaking probably several hundred thousand child labor laws. A high school samurai should not be off fighting terrorists with the sword, they should be in school studying. This kind of erodes my suspension of disbelief, but after a point I gave up and was like, yeah, sure, whatever, they're just that smart, it's fine, whatever, dude, I'm over it. But anyway, their plane crashes in a fantasy world because, yeah, and the one girl has a nuclear reactor in her plane for some reason that somehow didn't explode in the crash, and then an elf rescues them who is meant purely for fan service. But it does seem like it'd be kind of enjoyable to just like watch this little village prosper. But I could not get over when this happened. <laughs> On the opposite end of really smart children, we have problem children are coming from another world, aren't they? Where the kids just have superpowers. And I kind of prefer this because it's just a superpower. It's not pretending to be something else. But then the series wastes it by just making No Game No Life at Home, complete with this society based around winning games, but with infinitely more annoying characters. So I will just go watch No Game No Life again instead. I'm not going to waste 20 more minutes. Thanks. I'll go watch a good series instead. Zero 
Next up, we have another female-led isekai, but not in the fun way, where we have, didn't I say, to make my abilities average in the next life, which has every isekai trope, but this time there's a female lead. Yay, progressive. But that doesn't really make it any better. It has three jokes, and they are that Mile, which is her name, it's an alias, but whatever, her name is still Mile, that she looks like a child, has no breasts, and is actually super OP. None of these are funny. It also has a child abduction plot to start off and get the main cast together, which is a choice, but not one I would do. Overall, just because you have a female lead doesn't mean you can get away with doing all the boring isekai tropes, guys. Need to break it to you. Another forgettable entry in the Isekai catalog is Drugstore in Another World, The Slow Life of a Cheap Pharmacist, which in its defense is a pretty chill show. Cosmos VA is here and not a grating nuisance, but he still kind of has the same style of humor. It's chill and comfy, and that's really all it has going for it. There are better shows to watch if you are looking for that. Why are you running? Now before we enter the final two of the last batch, Let's take a trip back to 2004 for Kyokara Mao, the oldest entry so far, and it shows. Most of the episode is spent refusing to accept that we are in an isekai world, a thing that 99% of all isekai do away with in the first 30 seconds, and I am used to and kind of prefer. I do kind of like that there's more wonder in the world here with Kyokara Mao, but... It just wasn't that enjoyable. It's probably good for its time, but I'm so used to the isekai happening and people just moving on that I was just like, Yuri, shut up and move on. You got a whole world to live. And lastly, we reach our final two entries, both which are actually short anime in Isekai Izekaya and Isekai Quartet. Isekai Izekaya is just an ad for cooking. They even spend the last few minutes of the episode showing a real cook make the food from the episode. Whereas Isekai Quartet is the Isekai snake biting its head, or however that metaphor goes because it's just isekai anime getting isekai'd again. But for context, I dropped Overlord after the first season. I've seen a singular episode of Tanya. I literally watched the first episode of Tanya right before watching Isekai Quartet, so I have no understanding of that. I do actually like ReZero, but I actively enjoy Konosuba less and less with each passing day. And naturally, I didn't enjoy Isekai Quartet, mainly because I find the Konosuba cast incredibly grating on my ears now, and this didn't help. They just don't shut up. I have in my notes several times some variant of Aqua needs to shut up. But on the other side of that, I also realized that Kazuma has the, um, he's right behind me, isn't he, kind of vibes, which isn't anything important, I just thought it was funny. So I think you can tell I didn't enjoy it, but I imagine if you like all four of those things, you probably will. <laughs> and with that, we have finished the first batch of isekai anime. I still have like 40 more to go. I'm splitting it into parts because I actually want to make progress on it. And after watching like six hours of largely mid anime, I need to sever the, sever the cord for a little bit. What did I learn from this first batch? A lot of you Sky anime are just simply fine. They aren't as aggressively bad as it felt like the cultural consensus made them out to be, but very few were like actually good. They just kind of existed and have minor twists to a similar premise that my appreciation of them kind of varied, but I can't say beyond a couple that I would actually want to watch more of them but at the end of the day my drop list on my anime list is thriving there's so much more there so at least something came out of this first part to my deep dive into all these isekai anime 